The upstairs of our house has this open space at the top of the stairs that was being used as my husband's cluttered office. But I think a different space would work better and have more privacy and we could really use another bedroom up here for my son Theo. So I decided I'm going to try to create a bedroom space and frame up a wall and then create a long skinny hallway at the top of the stairs. I'm Melissa Woods and if you've never seen me before, I'm an avid DIYer who believes that DIY takes courage over confidence. I've never framed up a wall before, but we're going to give it a go. First, I got to take the time to clear this space of the clutter. There are so many items in here on these open shelves that are visually heavy and they really could find a better home like on a closed cabinet of bookshelves and I'm putting all the files into a file cabinet. The mid-century modern piece in here I absolutely love but it's just too big to work for Theo's dresser so I actually sold this. It's a piece I refinished and have owned the last like nine years. I also sold the big set of shelves that were actually an Ikea Hylas hack. I just added lumber across two of them and then my husband's desk and office chair are going to be in the basement for now. We brought up the drywall before I started framing just so that I wouldn't have to maneuver through this skinny hallway. An old lady who used to live in this house told me that this actually used to be a bedroom, so this bulkhead that runs across should have framing inside, reminiscent from the past. I'm gonna open it up and see. What I found was this weird loose wire. I didn't know what it was, but I decided I shouldn't mess with it, and I continued on to the flooring. Here I'm just laying a 2x4 down as my guide for the width of the wall to cut out the carpet as well as the pad underneath. You can't tell in this video clip but my heart was pounding. It is so nerve wracking to just destroy your carpeted floors. I mean at this point like the wall has to work right because there's no turning back. I cut the little piece of baseboard in the caulking and then I pried off the piece of baseboard that would be changed with the addition of the wall. I also cut the tack strips out so that I can frame up flush against the other wall and to the subfloor. I am using 2x4s for my framing and I'm going to just assemble them on the bottom plate using my framing nailer and the stud master. It's a handy metal jig that gets my framing spacing exactly 16 inches on center. I'm not using a top plate in my framing because I'm trying to work around that wire. So I drilled a hole at the top of each of these studs for the wire to go through the center. And then I also drilled pocket holes to screw these studs into the existing 2x4 in the ceiling and use that as my top plate. I didn't know how well this would work without the top plate and it turns out not well because as soon as we went to lift up the framing, the ones we weren't holding on to just came right out. The nails like pulled right out. So I ended up toenailing those later on. So here I am just stringing this wire through each of my modified studs and screwing them all into that top two by four when I tugged very hard on this wire at one point it just popped right out it wasn't attached to anything here after doing all that work I was able to just pull that white wire and get rid of it um, it was like a cable wire that wasn't being used anymore and it was loose on both ends after the studs were all secured I was able to come in the bottom and secure them to the subfloor by nailing them down through the bottom plate and I also toenailed the bottom of the studs that had come apart when we lifted the wall. The other small piece of wall that goes on the other side of the door had wiring to work around as well but this wiring I know was for the light so it was worth it for me to modify these studs. Next I framed up the door. I didn't really know what I was doing but I think I did okay and um, this was way easier than I thought. I did all this framing and a couple sheets of drywall up in only one day. I put up a few full sheets of drywall while I had my husband's help. I could have mounted the bottom one first and then the other one on top, which would be the fastest, but I only had his help for like 30 minutes before he had to leave. So I decided to mount the top one first so that I for sure could get it done with two people. That's why you'll see here that I had to lift the bottom sheet by myself. After hanging the sheets of drywall came a lifetime of mudding and taping. This always takes so long for me because I'm certainly not a professional, but I've done almost a dozen spaces now and I'm getting to the point where I'm pretty good. I prefer a flat level five finish, so 
I just don't really trust other people to come in and do a good enough job. When I was done taping and mudding, I also came in with my random orbital sander to sand it instead of hand sanding because I trusted that I wasn't going to take off too much of the mud and expose the tape. And I wanted that buttery smooth finish. Overall, I was extremely pleased with how my drywall job turned out. Next up was priming and painting and we have a functional wall. I can't believe it. I'm so proud that I did this myself. This video is sponsored by Work Pro Tools. You're going to see me using Work Pro Tools throughout my video because of their power, their versatility, and their amazing quality. I have used Work Pro Tools for two years now, and I definitely recommend them, especially their workbenches. Now, this workbench I want to show off in this video is super cool. It is very, very heavy duty, made with high quality steel and a thick rubber wood top. It's rated for up to 500 pounds. The top also has a waterproof and scratch resistant coating for lasting durability. The workbench is height adjustable using the hand crank that turns easily and tucks away or completely removes when not in use. At its lowest, the work table can be 29 inches tall perfect for a petite person to use in a variety of circumstances. The highest it goes to is 38 inches, which works well as a standing desk or to bring whatever you're working on into better view. This is completely customizable for a more ergonomic workspace. Large heavy duty casters allow the workbench to be mobile and move easily wherever you need to use it. They can also lock in place and hold strong when you need them to. However, you can also assemble it with the stationary feet provided that you can adjust to perfectly level. This product is straightforward and well-made. Click the link in the description to check it out. I also uninstalled the ceiling fan. I'm going to get a different light fixture in here. Then I installed the door. I bought a door that matches all the rest in the upstairs of our home. I did trim work, caulking, and when all was said and done, it's finally time to move on to decorating this brand new bedroom I created. The first thing I'm going to do is this cool wall feature. I'm using yellow frog tape because this wall had only been painted like two days prior. And so the paint was real fresh and not cured. The yellow tape is more delicate and won't peel off any of your finish. So I'm going to make stripes that carry onto the ceiling. This is just going to be like a little feature something kind of modern and interesting at the end of the bed is there anything more satisfying than a tape peel oh i just love it so i peeled the tape when the second coat of gray was still wet and i love how this little stripe feature turned out it looks so cool i'm also going to use frog tape in this furniture project this is an ikea cura bunk bed i need to paint it black to go with the color scheme this wood look is just like the color variation is too contrasting it's not going to work so i taped this off and i primed it and i painted it with a couple coats of black it looks so modern and cute in black my son theo is seven and he really likes his bed because it's lofted but it's not too high that he hits his head on the ceiling and he still has like a play space underneath when I went to reassemble the bed, this clip is so funny because my toddler, Liam, almost had a crisis with the white paintbrush. I don't even know how I let him like get a hold of this, but thankfully I caught him before <laughs> he did too much damage. So with the IKEA Kira bed reassembled, I had this cool idea to add functionality on the ends by taking some scrap lumber I had, creating a railing, and then also a shelf for book storage. Theo loves to read and he has a ton of little chapter books. This is going to be a really efficient way to store all of them and it's just going to be accessible for him when he's in bed at night reading and resting. The other piece of furniture I'm going to modify for this space is a secondhand dresser I picked up for only 20 bucks. I suspect it's mid-century because of the simplistic lines, dovetail drawers, the center slides, and the tapered legs but I don't really know. I just think it has potential. I'm going to dig into it and see. And since I sold the other mid-century dresser that was in this space, 
we need something that's going to be like the right scale and work for Theo. So I applied a stripper on all of the drawers and I cover in plastic wrap to make it more effective, keeping the product wet and allowing it to really eat through all the layers of finish. Now my camera actually turned off in the middle of me scraping and so that file got corrupted and all I have to show you for the scraping process is this clip from my phone. But isn't this incredible? Thankfully, the people who painted this did not use primer. This came off so easily. And immediately after stripping, I just wiped it with rubbing alcohol and could start sanding. There's a routered groove on these drawers where the wood grain switches direction that I want to feature by painting it black. So I filled that in with black paint and then I came into sand. The front of these wood drawers are veneer, so I had to be careful not to sand too deep but I'm really, really pleased with how these turned out. I just sealed them with Odie's oil. It's a new product I've come across that I'm obsessed with. It works so well. It's like durable, waterproof, smells amazing. It soaks into the wood and really solidifies to a nice hard finish. I did not have time to pull all of the paint off this piece and so I decided to just sand down the gray paint job on the top and sides of this dresser and then give it a couple coats of black to go with the rest of the room design. This was the last step in Theo's bedroom makeover and not only did the dresser turn out incredible but the whole space is so mind-boggling it used to be just an open area totally underutilized in my house and kind of an eyesore with how much clutter it would always collect now it is really functional it's quiet and comfortable and cozy for my son it's bright and modern with the color choices that i did and kind of a simplistic scandinavian style if this project was inspiring or helpful to you you can thank me by following me on my other channels like tiktok and instagram you can subscribe and hit the notifications bell for my YouTube channel. To financially support Welcome to the Woods, you can send in the super thanks or follow the link in the description to my Patreon page. This is a short list of my patrons who every month send me money so that I can continue to make incredible videos inspiring others to DIY. It's safe to say my son Theo really loves his new space. Thank you so much for watching Welcome to the Woods. We'll catch you again next time.